Hey nerds, Farmer Jesse here. So recently we asked our Patreon members what they wanted to see more of from our work. And one thing we got multiple requests for was a sort of day in the life. Uh, but because everything is so varied on a farm, I thought I would do not just a sort of day in the life of Farmer Jesse thing, but also how a day and a week breaks down for the average market gardener. And I'm going to add a lot of nerdy details that I think are helpful because that's how we roll. Sound good? Good. So let's do it. Every day for me starts exactly the same at around 3 to 3.30 a.m. For the uninitiated, 3 a.m. is a little known hour of the morning that is populated almost solely by essential workers and lunatics like myself. To be clear though, the reason I get up this early and have for a decade is not a requisite of farming. It has almost nothing to do with the farm itself. Well, not directly, anyway. Farmers do generally have to get up early, but the very early morning is the time I use to update my family budget, then do research for videos, write notes, edit videos I've shot, and answer comments and messages if there's any time left. Usually there is not a lot of time left, which uh, sucks to not be able to respond to all the comments and messages we get, so I hope you know that we love you. It's supposed to be a heart, but it kind of looks a little bit more like a like a literal heart. My actual in the field farm day starts around 7.30 or 8 a.m., give or take. If it's going to be a hot day or there's a storm coming or some other thing I'm trying to beat, maybe I start a little bit earlier. If it's raining heavily and plans to stop, I may start slightly later because working in the rain sucks. Though I will say that the living pathways are so much nicer in the rain than the mud but I'm not gonna go down that aggression right now. That's for another video. Usually I try to start my physical farm day no earlier than 7 a.m. and end it no later than 4 p.m. Rarely will you ever find me working in the field beyond those hours, except perhaps to water the greenhouse in the evening, in the summer. I learned early on that if you don't give yourself relatively strict hours as a farmer, it's hard to get everything done because there is no pressure to stop and you don't strive as hard to make each task efficient. If you know you have to stop by 4 p.m. on the other hand, no matter what, you may find ways to speed up whatever is slowing you down. Indeed, you're going to be a lot more efficient if you're up against the clock. I take an hour or so break at midday for lunch and a power nap. I nap every day and can barely survive when I don't. Not to get political here, but naps for president. So I'm going to detail some different types of days, but that's the basic outline of my workday. However, I should acknowledge here that my type of farm favors these hours. If you have livestock, for instance, your hours may be different, uh, or chickens like collecting eggs in the evening or shutting the chickens up at night or letting them out early in the morning, or maybe it's like having to harvest your cut flowers after the heat has died down in the late afternoon. For dairies, it may be milking before dawn. For beekeepers, I actually don't know when you all milk the bees. All that to say, every farm and family has its own schedule. For vegetable farms like my own, the schedule largely evolves around harvests. Uh, for instance, if you're doing farmer's markets on Wednesdays and Saturdays, you will likely need two or three harvest days every week, depending on the size of those markets. So for an example, you may mark Tuesdays and Fridays off as your harvest and pack days, for Wednesday and Saturday markets. Then mark Wednesdays and Saturdays off as your market days, because you won't be at the farm, or you'll have to hire somebody to do your market, that sort of stuff. That leaves you with a handful of days left to manage soil work, planting, seeding, and all the rest. Uh, farms with bigger crews may be able to have a harvest team handle the harvest while another team handles the field work or washing and packing, and then another team handles the sales or whatever, but mostly I'm talking today about small farms like my own with two to four farmers. So here's an example of what our schedule looks like on a weekly basis, or at least looked like last year when we were doing the farmer's market. Monday was my day off. Uh, I still had to send out lists to chefs. It's a hard sentence to say. I usually tried to do that after Sunday market, but I didn't always feel like it because, I don't know, at the end of the week you're tired. So if I didn't, I had to do it on my days off on Mondays but I tried to leave Mondays for rest. One quick pro tip about sending lists for the week to chefs and etc. cetera, uh, especially at first, as you get started, put your eyes on everything you intend to add to the list. You may think you have squash that week, for instance, but you go out and the vine borers got there first. Or you may think that you have radishes, but you go to check and they've gotten too pithy to sell. When you're just starting out, there is perhaps nothing harder than forecasting what you will have for chefs and such, uh, but putting your eyes on the crop and being honest with yourself about what is genuinely going to be ready will help tremendously. And plus take notes, figure out what kind of yield you get off of a bed so that you know I've got half a bed, so I've got whatever, 40 pounds of lettuce or whatever it may be. Anyway, back to my schedule last year, 
Our wonderful old employee, Greg, would work on Mondays, usually cleaning post-market bins, prepping beds, starting seeds, mowing, or whatever other tasks could be done sort of on his own. Um, again, Mondays were my day off. And during the bulk of the season, I would take one and a half days off per week. But that was usually only from June until August. Then in September, I would get back to two days off per week. So on Tuesdays, we would team up and try and get some planting done in the morning with the afternoon reserved for whatever else needed to happen on the farm, like cultivation or composting or some of my weird little experiments or what have you. Because we didn't have a midweek market, Wednesdays were for harvesting for restaurants and other non-market outlets and delivering in the afternoon. Thursdays were for more planting in the morning, especially for lettuces when the soil and air is cool. Otherwise, you have to do that in the evening after the heat dissipates. And again, I don't want to work in the evening, so I don't do that. After planting in the morning, it was often seeding in the afternoon. We seed trays every week from mid-February to September. So there's a lot of seeding every single week. Depending on the time of year and size of the markets, we would harvest some things for our Saturday market, like carrots on Thursday mornings, and then do the rest of the market harvest on Fridays because I do not want to be harvesting until dark on Fridays and then getting up in the morning and going to market on Saturday. But I also don't want to harvest everything on Thursday for a Sunday market so that it sat in the cooler for several days. You need to be as fresh as the food you sell, so don't stay up super late on a Friday and then try and run to market on a Saturday, looking like a Farmer Jesse. Saturdays, we would go to market usually from May until almost September when our youth soccer season started back because I coach both of my kids' teams in youth soccer and they have games most Saturday mornings. Uh, I couldn't obviously be at market and games, but we would continue our Sunday market all the way through October when that particular market ended, which was always the better market anyway for us as vegetable growers because it was in a neighborhood and people came with their shopping lists. The Saturday market was downtown and more event-like and that it has more prepared food and people come to socialize or stop by from local hotels where they are not cooking veggies. Sunday markets are great because the customers often mean business and get their food for the week. It's less of a social event and more of a grocery store in my experience. So for that reason, Sunday became our main market. For Saturdays, I would pack up around 5.30 a.m. and leave by 5.50 a.m. to get to market by 6.20. I don't know if these details are very interesting, but maybe they're helpful. Then the Saturday market would end around 2 p.m. So it's a pretty long day. On Sundays, my beloved day, it was much more laid back. I could pack around 7.30 a.m., go get a bagel from our friends at Southland Bagels, shout outs to them, and then set up for market at 9 a.m. That market lasted from 10 a.m. to two, and we would do the same amount of business in that four hour window that we did in eight hours on Saturdays. So Saturdays actually were not as valuable. However, this year we are no longer doing the farmer's market. So I wanna contrast that schedule that I just described with this current year because now our weeks are a little bit different. We quit our farmer's market, but there's no real great story to it. Basically, our kids are in school now, and so the weekends were when they were home, and I didn't want to lose any time with them that I didn't have to. Even though the farmer's market was quite profitable for us, nothing you do in your life is worth losing time with your kids, obviously, which is also why I stop at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. After that, I'm hanging out with them, or resting, or even playing soccer with them, or taking them to the park, or whatever. Like I said, I coach both of their teams as well, so during the season, I'm, you know, doing practices and doing games. I also host a soccer club during the summer for the community where the kids and I go and play with a bunch of other kids, just some kind of casual pickup soccer. Now, with the market gone, I can take two actual weekend days off a week, which is wonderful. I still have to do my no-till growers work every day to keep up, like today is Sunday. It's like 6 a.m., Father's Day, thus the excessive dad jokes, for instance. But as for farming, that is largely a five-day-a-week job for me and goes down to almost nothing in the winter. I even sometimes refer to the farm as a part-time gig for that reason, because in the winter, it's roughly two work days as opposed to five or six in the summer. Without the markets, we are selling mostly to restaurants and retail, which means my harvests are Tuesdays and Wednesdays with deliveries on Wednesday nights and Thursdays. That leaves Mondays, Thursday afternoons, and Fridays for field stuff or what we'll just refer to as other. One detail for the nerds who have watched this far that I think is notable is if it's harvest day, harvest is a morning thing for most crops. 
I try to bust out the tender lettuce and baby greens first and get them uh, into the cooler or into the wash tanks as quickly as possible to get any field heat off. Then the larger leaf greens like kale and even green onions or you know whatever will be most affected by the heat, I get those next. And then I save peppers and tomatoes and squash and zucchinis for last. Though of course we are harvesting those cucurbit crops almost every single day to keep up. Harvesting very heavy on Fridays, so they are not too big when I get back to harvesting on Mondays because I don't want to be harvesting on the weekends. Unless of course you need a baseball bat, in which case you can grow your own. So that's convenient. Hey, so not a costume change. The audio just decided to go completely bananas towards the end of that video. I plant something or add an amendment. That was fun. So I'm reshooting it, which is a good opportunity to say if you've appreciate these videos, consider signing up to be a Patreon member. That would be super helpful. Anyway, uh, my partner Hannah manages all of the invoicing and deliveries and inputting the organic details for our organic certification. For invoicing, we just use QuickBooks, nothing fancy there. I think our neighbors are shooting off fireworks. It is literally 6 a.m. For the organic certification paperwork, I shoot Hannah a text message after I plant something or add an amendment or do anything that needs to be recorded on the organic records immediately after I do them and then she can input those when she has the time to do a bunch at once. That way I'm not having to open our software, which by the way is called COG Pro. Uh, I can link it, but I'm not endorsing it. It's just the only one that has actually worked for us. Anyway, it's easier to just text her what I did instead of me trying to input the details from the field or trying to remember what I did, which is not helpful. I don't have any memory. Instead of me trying to input the details from the field, I can just keep working and she can find the time to do all of that all at one time. Also, the texts give us an emergency backup in the case that the software dies or whatever. Uh, that's a system that has worked for us, but there are better ways to keep up with organic paperwork, I'm sure. It's just the one that we found kind of fits our style. As a farmer, there will always be more that could be done because you just will not ever finish everything in a day make a reasonable list and simply try to accomplish as much as possible. I usually make my next day's list on my phone in the notes app throughout the day while I work. If you're managing a staff, I would use something more like Google Sheets or Docs to get the list together so that everyone can have access to it and mark things off as they go. That said, I cooked like in kitchens for many years and became fond of the paper list. So I was often using that for our employees uh, and we would all just mark off the list whenever we got something done which is very satisfying. But this year, since it's just Hannah and I, plus the voice helping occasionally, I like having it on my phone. Anyway, I hope you all got something out of that, if only that I am a lunatic who gets up way too early in the morning to make these videos, which, if you appreciate that, consider picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook or other merch from notollgrowers.com. Sustain us by joining our Patreon page at patreon.com slash notollgrowers, where the idea for this particular video was given. Or just hit that super thanks button, that works too. Otherwise, super thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. You know how it's very hard to stop a sneeze? Like when it's coming, it's like almost nothing you can do about it. Um, that same thing applies to dad jokes. Just, I'm helpless. <laughs>